Happy holidays. Hopefully you were able to spend time over the weekend with those closest to you. This morning we filed four 8Ks at Camber and one 8K at Viking, and I wanted to take the opportunity to share a bit more detail on the filings. Prior to getting into it, I wanted to emphasize that everything I say is subject to the, the full extent of the filings and to the disclaimer at the beginning of this presentation. And that way I don't have to say there are no guarantees 25 times. So please read the filings in detail. The first of which, the AK filed at both Camber and Viking, was with respect to the proposed acquisition of the renewable diesel facility in Reno, Nevada, the one designed to produce over 43 million gallons of renewable diesel per year. And the amendment we signed last week crystallized the purchase price which is uh, $300 million plus a potential increase if it's determined that the facility will produce more than 3,000 barrels of renewable diesel per day. So transformative acquisition to say the least for not only Viking but the entire organization. And the bulk of the purchase price is to be paid in non-voting convertible preferred stock of Viking, which is a, you know, a great win for Viking. And the fixed conversion price will be determined uh, 10 days after the closing date, if it occurs. So that, that's great for everyone. The second 8K filed today was with respect to extensions granted by our senior lender to the filing of the outstanding financial statements at Camber. And the deadline mirrors the deadline recently granted by the New York Stock Exchange, which is January 14th, 2022. Again, our hope is to file before then. I know I sound like a broken record, but generally we're just waiting for the SEC to provide feedback on a couple of accounting issues, and we can't file anything unless and until we get that feedback. We was hoping to get it last week. It didn't come. Hopefully it's this week. Uh, but again, everybody just wants to make sure we're aligned on the accounting treatment of the sale of uh, the company's Series C preferred stock and a couple of other items. So um, the deadline also, uh, the deadline by which the company is to increase its authorized capital remains at December 31st. And we have the meeting coming up on December 30th in an effort to accomplish that objective. The third 8K was with respect to a deal we reached last week with our existing lender to uh, amend the terms of outstanding promissory notes. And the amendments are extremely favorable to the company. One, the maturity date, be extended to January 1st, 2027. The interest rate gets reduced from 10% per annum down to Wall Street Journal Prime, and the conversion price of the notes uh, fixed at $1.50 per share, which is great. The amendments are effective, you know, conditional upon the company increasing its authorized capital this week. And the last 8K filed this morning was with respect to a new potential financing arrangement where the lender has agreed to loan the company $25 million. The bulk of the proceeds are to be used to redeem uh, any preferred shares not already owned by the lender or its affiliates, which represents about 46% of the outstanding Series C preferred shares would be extinguished if we can close this transaction. And the terms of the loan would mirror the terms of the amendments to the existing promissory notes. So here it would be five-year term, Wall Street Journal Prime with interest payable at maturity and a fixed conversion price of $1.50 a share. And then there's also a warrant uh, entitlement associated with this financing transaction where the lender, if it closes uh, on Friday of this week, it, the lender will receive uh, warrants entitling them to purchase up to 50 million common shares of Camber with uh, an exercise price of $10 a share for the first 25 million warrants and an exercise price of $20 per share uh, for the remaining 25 million warrants for the five-year term. So these two things, in my view, in analyzing the historical financing transactions of Camber, uh, in my view, they're the best terms the company's ever received. And it would uh, accomplish a lot uh, for the company and its stakeholders. Uh, it's conditional, of course, on the company increasing its authorized capital. 
And on that note, as most people are aware, there's a meeting scheduled for December Thursday th this week to increase the authorized capital. Right now, the company's at its limit. And so it's effectively handcuffed. Without the increase, it can't do anything. Uh, separate from you know, raising money and closing deals like this, the company couldn't entertain acquisitions for stock or mergers that involve stock of the company. So it's important to, uh, for the company to get that vote. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please, if you're a shareholder of the company as of November 22nd, we encourage you to vote. And if, you're inclined, if you've already voted and you're inclined to change your vote for whatever reason, there's a way you can do that. Uh, it's all available on the proxy cards you've received in the last week or two. And you know, dilution is always a concern, but it's management response, management's responsibility, in particular mine, to make sure there's corresponding value. And with potential deals like this, this proposed acquisition, with the expansion opportunities we have at Simpson Maxwell, with uh, what we plan to achieve in marketing the ESG clean energy system in Canada in 2022, we believe that we can add significant value to the company and all of the organization's stakeholders. So thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your holidays and Happy New Year.